Microsoft Word 210 Paragraph Formatting Line Spacing Options in Word 210 If we click within the paragraph, as you can see in this paragraph, it has the normal line spacing. If you want to change the line spacing, we should just go up here and notice this is in the paragraph group under the Home tab. So if we click on the Home tab in S3, go to Paragraph, and then click on the down arrow here. This is the line and spacing, uh, line and paragraph spacing uh, control. Click on the down arrow, and as you can see by default, it has a line spacing of one. We can change this to 1.15. And notice in the actual body of the, uh, the text, this changes to show you what's happening. If we go to 1.5, it changes again. Go to 2, it changes again. 2.5 and 3. So if I want a line spacing of, say, 2.5, I'd click on this, and there's the line spacing within the selected uh, paragraph of 2.5. Click on the Undo button, it undoes it. If we go to another paragraph, let's say we want to set this to a line spacing of 3, we would click here click here and there you are it's done. Click on the undo button and it all goes back to normal. There are other options if we click within the first paragraph again if we click here again we can go to line spacing options and from here we've got various other options so for instance in the line spacing section here of the paragraph dialog box we can go to 1.5 or double which we've seen before or we can go to at least, so we can have a line spacing of at least 12 points or 13, 14, whatever we want. When we click on OK, you'll see the changes. We click on the undo button again to undo that. You see we have other options. So we click on the down arrow, whoops, we click on the down arrow here, go to line spacing options again. If we click on the down arrow here, we can set uh, line spacing, so instead of using at least, we can have exactly, so we can have a line spacing of, say, exactly 12 points, or 13 points, or 14 points. So I'll set this to a line spacing of 18 points. Confirm that by clicking on the OK button, and there it goes. Click on the Undo button, and if we go back and see what other options are available, we go to the line spacing options uh, section again, Click on the down arrow, down arrow here in the line spacing section and we can have a multiple section. So if we want a line spacing of say 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So we set this to a line spacing of 7. There you are, it's a little bit ridiculous but you have got a line spacing of 7. Don't like that, we go back to where we were and uh, it's all back to normal. So as I say, the various options you've got here are you can have um, line spacings of exactly a, a certain amount of uh, space which you can uh, use by setting the point spacing or you can have multiple spacing and so you know one times the normal spacing two times the normal spacing and so on using the window orphan control within Word 2010 if you look at this document here if you look at the last paragraph if I select the last paragraph you can see it carries on over the page here and we have two lines on the last page. Now what I can do is I can click within this last par paragraph here and if I make sure the Home tab is selected and within the Paragraph section if I click on the More button here, sometimes called the Dialog Box uh, Launcher, um, this will display the uh, Paragraph Dialog Box. If I click on this tab here, the Lines and uh, Page Breaks uh, tab, Within here, you see by default, the window slash orphan control box is highlighted, it's, it's active. So this is active by default. So we don't have to switch it on. You may want to switch it off for some reasons, but by default it's on. So let's look at this last line. At the moment, we've got two lines here. And the idea of the, um, the orphan control is you don't have a single line left on its own on the page. So if we delete some text here, slowly, slowly, character at a time, look what happens. Now look what happens when we get towards the uh, beginning of the line here. See what happened? Next line dropped down. So basically this stops one line being displayed on its own as an orphan, if you like, on the, uh, the last page of the document. And uh, that's basically the, the function of this, uh, this control. And as I say, you go to the More button here, 
and if necessary you switch it on but it's on by default so you've got the window orphan control there which is active using the keep lines together feature in Word 2.10 here we've got a document and if we look at the the last uh, paragraph on this page as you can see it carries on over the page if you click within here and click on the more button at the bottom of the paragraph section and then click on the lines and page breaks uh, tab here you notice there's this option here that says keep lines together if we click that click on OK notice what happens it no longer breaks over the page it keeps the lines together within that particular paragraph so as I say, you click here, you click on this tab here, and then you select Keep Lines Together, and just, just confirm that. If we undo it to see what the original situation was, as you can see, when we undo it, the paragraph breaks over the, uh, the bottom of the page there. Using the Keep With Next option in Word 2.10. If you, look at this, uh, if you look at this document here, we've got a header and some text, a header and some text, and here we've got a header, but the text that's associated with it is broken onto the next page here. So if I click within this header here, and then on the Home tab within the Paragraph section, if I click on the Dialog Box Launcher, sometimes called the More button. If I then click on the uh, Line and Page Breaks uh, tab here, I can click on where it says Keep With Next. And if I click on OK, keep your eye on this bit at the bottom here when I click on OK. Do you see what happens? It's associated with the next bit. It keeps it with the next bit. So if I undo that, that's what it looked like. Basically, that was breaking, and the next bit of text was there. But if I reapply that by using the redo button, as you can see, the keep with text is basically said to keep this bit here, bit of text here, keep it with the next section here. Using the page break before feature in Word 2.10. If you look at this uh, document here, we've got the first paragraph there second paragraph, third paragraph, and fourth, fourth paragraph is here, going over the page. Now let's say, if I click within the third paragraph here, let's say I want to automatically insert a page break before this particular paragraph. The way I do this is I make sure the Home tab is selected. Within the Paragraph group, I click on the More button down here, sometimes called the Dialog Box Launcher. This brings up the Paragraph Dialog Box. I click on the Line and Page Breaks tab, and there's this option here called Page Break Before. If I click on this, do you see what happened? It, it forced a page break here, which forced this next paragraph onto the page. If I undo that, it was like that, but because we're forcing a page break before this paragraph, if I redo that, you can see, sure enough, it forces it onto the next page, and that's the whole point of this feature. Applying and modifying multi-level lists within Word 2.10. What we've got here is just simply a standard list of items, and we're going to highlight this. So I've highlighted the entire list. You'll notice if you look within the paragraph section here, you've got the usual um, bullets, numbering, and next to that you've got something called a uh, multi-level list. If I click on that, I can select a style. So for instance, I could select um, a, this style here. Now at first that doesn't look terribly interesting, but if I deselect it, select the items which are the sub items if you like and then click on this button here which is the increase indent look what happens it automatically gives it a multi-level list format so if I click on these and then click on the indent button and then click on these items here and these items here you kind of get the idea and it automatically formats it using the chosen style so we go down the rest of these here, this one here, these ones here, these ones here, and finally those ones there. So as you can see we've got a multi-level list format where you've got the, uh, the main sections are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Then within that the items that we uh, um, increase the indent of we've got the number or the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. If we uh, go back to here, the multi-level list, if I want I can try a different format. So if I click here, as you can see, 
that gives it a different format. So we've got 1, then 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 2, 2.1, 2.2, 3, 3.1, uh, 3.2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 10 here, where it's 10.1, 10.2, 10.3. So this is an excellent way of applying multi-level formatting to a list. If we go down here, you see there's various other options. We looked at uh, these first two options here. If I want to, I can try a slightly different type of formatting. So if I apply this one here, as you can see, each main item there has this symbol here, whereas the sub-items have the, um, the little arrows. If I see what else is available, I can have a uh, format something like, uh, like this. If I go back to the multi-level list here, we can have something like, like this. So Article 1, then Section 1.01, 1.02, 1.03, and so on and so forth. So it's a very easy way of applying um, formatting to a multi-level list.